G'day, how you going? Are you an applause here? You're acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to me video. Good to have you here on this live stream. I'm going to do a landscape layout of a beautiful meadow, a bit of a sunset just hiding behind the hill saying, Uru, see you later, goodbye. And it's going to have a tree forking from the top going, g'day. And he's going to protect the whole painting as well. All right. The colours and the size, the size is 12 by 16 inch canvas. And I will put the colours in the description below once I have finished filming the life. So I'm going to get some craft paint on my palette down there. I will just grab myself some brushes. There we go. I've got a couple of brushes. Watch the video a couple of days after it's aired and you'll see the edited version totally different than the live. You'll see it all magically, intricately put together. So I'm going to bring you over here and we're going to get right into it. Now I'm going to do the sky with the craft paint. I only want a little bit of um, retarder in it because I'm not going to overly blend the living buggery out of so many things here. So I'll get this mixed up into the craft white. There we go. I better move me coffee so it doesn't get contaminated with paint. All right, now I just want to simply, quickly get this putter on a brush and map in the sky half of this painting. Very simple painting. If you're new to painting, I like that. And I'm going to stroke it left and right, just like a gentleman. And I'm going to wipe the brush and then bring the sky colours into it. So it's got a bit of paint on there. I'll wipe it on my towel. Why don't I wash it? Because it's going to mix up with that white again. And I want a little bit of... Um, Down here, we've got some Indian yellow. We've got some cerulean blue and gray. So I want my Indian yellow just for the tinsy bit of sun peeking down over the hill there. It's either a sunrise or sunset, either either. So right here, it's just gonna come along and where are we? Probably radiate along there like that. Just along there like that. Pick up a bit more. Scoot it in there. Oh, yeah, love that. Right along there like that. That is it. I will get a little bit of, um, uh, where is, uh, what have we got? Permanent alinzerin. Let's try a bit of that. permanent engine with a little bit of the yellow that's already in the brush. It's making an orange. I don't want too much of this. And I just want to cut that yellow from mixing with me blue. There we go. I'll get that up there like that. And I'll just trace that into the yellow like so. That's it, beautiful. Now I'm going to wipe that brush. Simple sunset. This You can use red gold or a deep orange instead of that permanent linton. I just use that because it's what I had at the time. Now we're going to grab the blue cerulean blue the paint on the canvas is going to lighten it down. And look at that, I should have washed my brush. I don't know if you can see it. This doesn't matter. I've got some yellow bits within it, but she'll be all right. I don't want this to look like beans like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to crisscross that into that reddish colour down towards the yellow like that. Destroy it. Destroy those bands and then come straight back up to the sky. Crisscross there. And then blend the sky with this brush. Just put her on a brush. There we go. 
Now, I'll just sit that down while I grab some titanium white from the tube, not the craft white, and I want a blending brush. And I've got a couple of brushes here to blend. And also when I blend, I like to have a kitchen towel. And where is my kitchen towel gone? There it is all the way at the back. So using my hog bristle fan brush, I use a hog bristle quite stiff and sturdy quite sturdy you love a sturdy brush don't you eh? get that sturdiness going if you're finding any enjoyment in this and it's your first time here hit the subscribe button and share all right now i want some clouds so i want some i want to start in the yellow first before i bring them up into the blue so that's that flavor there what do we got over here because they're going to create some kind of tempered coloured clouds here. Look at that. See how I stamped it on? I didn't brush it in because it'll grind. And now I've got my blending brush and a rag. And I want to get first concentrate with getting this blended into that yellow and just create some beautiful, lustful, um, lovely cloud behavior there come up to there because i'm going to add more onto it this is just so as i don't bring blue down into there now look what's on me blending brush hey look at that that's why you need this cloth and you just wipe it and we're going to don't like that shadow we're going to twist and turmoil all this paint into there and luster fire right up into the sky there and it's coming right up with grace there we go let me get that a bit more turmoil -y. all right wipe the brush i'll pull back here a bit now i need to add some more titanium white i need to wash that brush first just so as the um, contaminated paint won't destroy my white. So I'm just chiseling up some more white and I want to start building these clouds up now. So coming here into there, picking up some more because we've got all that sunset colours into there. Coming down, picking up a bit more. So if anything, I've screwed around and brought some feet down like that. But see, I don't want to bring the blue down into it. You don't want to do that. Let's see if I can get rid of that. And then you'll know what the guru is up to. All right, I'm turmoiling it. This is sort of coming over. You're going to start creating clouds now. You'll see things happen. I don't know what's going to happen, but if you see something happen that you like, leave little bits like that there if you like them. They look fantastic. Wipe that. And we'll get some of this turmoil, twisting, making cloud behavior in your, in your painting. Look at that. There we go. I'm liking that. I'm liking it. We've got lots of light, brights and brighter values and darker values within those clouds. It's looking great. Wiping the brush. I'm pulling back a lot because I don't want that shadow hovering over the canvas there to a bug you and annoy you. All right, now I'm going to pick up some more titanium white, and now I want to start doing the white clouds in the sky. That's what the sunset's been setting on. Um, we'll probably put, that tree's going to be there, so we could put bits of cirrus up here, some cirrusy stuff there. Bang. And we'll put something with a bum, with a body, and he's hovering over our head, hopefully over there like that 
and then we can add the appropriate amount of yumminess to those clouds. Now, see how easy I did that. You can do it, I'm telling you. Once you practice how to blend, watch what this brush does. I'm going to sit the bum on it. Boom. I want to sit this darker in front of that stuff so it looks like it's coming over our head. All right. Find a couple of bums there. That'll do. Bummed enough. Wipe your brush. And then start blending, leaving some vibrant bits and dull bits and twist the top into nothing because these are going over your head. Wipe your brush as you go. Pull, get movement in the brush, in the, in the clouds. There we go. It's quite simple. Some people might say that is hard to do. It is not hard to do. Anything you want to do, you can do. Uh, and, and just it's up to you how much practice you're going to need on it. It took me years to get to where I am today with my painting abilities. Now we've done that. We're just going to add a little bit of um, yumminess into there. I'm not going too crazy on the sky, even though it does look a bit crazy, doesn't it, eh? I want to grab just, see that grey I had there? I'll grab a bit of that just to get a bit of weather in those clouds, just to make them look more bullshittingly bullshit, meaning wow, a big wow factor. Instead of just white clouds, they've got weather within because see we've got the colors in there that could be a bit better but that'll do we've got white here but you know to me a cloud needs weather and if this gray is not enough i've just touched it in the tensiest winciest little bit of that permanent lenser and you'll see it now and this is mainly on the bums and just frustrating up into the cloud body okay because the sun's hitting this as well i'll gingerly and gently sit that down into the cloud i'm really fussing with these clouds but you've seen the procedure that i've done it doesn't take much to do that and that's why i always say you can do it because if i can do it you can do it there we go. How's that, everybody? Right. Sky's done. We can muck with that till the cows come home. I think that's enough. Now, where me lamp land's going to go, I just want to dry that bottom part of the sky for now. Now, I want to put some dark there. What am I thinking? Green. I'll use the... Where's the black? Here we go. See, I've got... The, this is a tilia as well, but it's free flow, so it's a looser... It's looser consistency than what's in there. So I always give it a bit of a shake. We'll get some of that on there like that. Look at that, eh? Beautiful. I've got my putter on a brush. I'm just going to grab this black on both sides. And this is going to be the meadow. So I'm pretty much from here. It's a slight arch. It's arching slightly. There we go arching slightly so there's no craft paint under here this is a simple painting nice and effective perylene green can't get enough of this color i absolutely love it i haven't been to the art shop yet to see if my art shop sells it i need some cadmium yellow just like that. There we go. Cadmium yellow medium to be exact. And I want to put some, so I'm going to use this a little bit just to turn the lights on, a little bit just to turn the lights on, just so you can see the darn stuff. And I want some hairy stuff. See how hairy that is? And we'll turn the camera back up to the screen there. Ooh, lucky I didn't forget that, eh? People would be upset. Now we want to put some, let's put some trees there. Boom. There's a tree there like that, eh? Look at that. And we'll get some other ones here. Come to the 
dark colour. Uh, there. Come along here somewhere. Something there. And something maybe there as well. Now they're getting a little bit lower here. How come? Oh, because they're sort of going over the hill and disappearing, I suppose. There we go. We've got our all sorts of trees there. Well, they should be disappearing over the hill. Okay, simple trees. I want some darker ones here. I'm just grabbing some more of the perylene green. Just there we go. Get some of this darker in there just like that. Beautiful, beautiful. You can come back later with a little script liner if you want and add um, some main trunks. Now I'm going to grab the yellow, the cadmium yellow, and I'm mixing. Before I do, I need a little bit of water. I've got to keep putting this. I always forget to put that on my palette when I'm starting. Here we go. So we've got our yellow green there now. Now that can be dry so it'll stick and this is going to subtly put some trees there. Subtly. See that? That's just very subtle. Leave some dark ones there. A bit of brightness up there and maybe a bit there. Bang. There we go. That's it. That is it. That will do it. I can keep mucking with that, but that'll do. Now what I need to do is to get the green field going. So I'm going to use... Uh, I'll try this one. And I'm not going to use the perylene green now. I'm going to use a different green. I'll use my sap green here, which is there, sap green. You might want to know, my God, why does he leave all those um, tubes on his palette for? There's a reason why that happens. And the only reason I can give you is because when I'm finished filming, I can write down what colour I use because a lot of people get gravely disappointed if I don't put the colours I use. Okay, so there we go. I'm just turning the lights on that sap green a bit. And we're going to, I'm just using a hog bristle. We'll get a bit of inkingness in there. We'll call that ink water, eh, because it turns your paint like ink. There we go. Now, I will push those back. Where are we? We're pushing them back, pushing them back. There we go. Now, like I said, this can be hairy at the top. It doesn't have to be a, a hard straight line. So I'm going to just jingle, jangle. I don't want a black edge there. It's going to look wrong if you leave the black edge there. So... Cover up any black edge. Turn your brush around. Try and keep it nice and sharp like that. Once you've done that bit there, we can just simply... It's a bit dark there. I want to just... There we go. We can just make our field. I wanted a nice arching field, so I don't want too many unnecessary dips in it. So we're just going along and we're covering up the black, but leaving subtle bits of darkness there to give it depth. OK, so come back from there and then we'll just gradually highlight it as we go. Now I'm just going to simply add some more yellow to that green because it looks bland. So we're going to grab some more yellow now and pull in here. Get some water in that. Now, I'm, I'm probably going to have to dry the painting as well. Oh, no, we might be able to do it. 
So we're coming along now and we're just gingerly scooting this across the land. Sit those trees back. Oh, don't go over the trees, you idiot. Just sit them back like that, you dag. There you go. Don't talk too loud or they'll hear what you're saying, Ian. All right, there we go. Right. <laughs> and we're going to have a brighter glare around here where the sun is setting or rising. So this is more... Is that looking like grass? See that there? I'll have to go back with some darker bits there. That's a big blob. It's just that I've got the camera over my shoulder and it's very awkward the way I paint, believe it or not. Yeah, I've got to go a bit more brighter yet, so bear with me. I'll get this there. <laughs> Such an easy painting, isn't it, eh? Now I need it more yellow, so I'm going more yellow, more water, bear with me a minute. Oh yeah, look at that. So the sun's out there, vastly shining on a bit of this field here, a meadow, it's a meadow, yeah, I've called it a meadow. Julie's run down the other side finishing her song. Oh, kind of sit that back as well. There we go. What do we need? I want a good brush for that. I'll use this one. I've got the black there, so I'm going to use maybe this brush here. I'll get it wet. I've got some black. And I want to put in my top tree trunk. Okay, where are we at the top? At the top. So we're going to have some... I've got like something here coming off. Bang, fat as it comes off. Bang, there we go. Because we want this to look like it's going out over our head. You don't want it to look like a flat, pressed flower, if you know what I mean. Now we're going to get... I like to go like this, boom, boom. They look more branchy. And he's going to come nice and so long as the edges are nice and sharp, you know. Now, try not to have that round, get that square. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. And then we'll get probably <sighs> not inky enough. See how it's breaking up? means there's just not enough water in it. Twist it. Now, now look how it's working. And just bring them into the middle of the painting. Oh, like that. Oh, join it up, eh? That'll do. That'll do it, Neil Blewett. We're just going to have a lot of um, foliage now. So I'll give this a bit of a dry because you can see there it's got a lot of um, wetness and you want to get rid of that wetness. I've given that a dry. Now I'm going to use two brushes, um, which is my, that one there, because once I've done the leaves, I want to really indicate some that are in focus uh i'll try and use well might tr <laughs> i'll try and use i'll use me um filbert 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 now where where's my yellow ochre gone 
Yeah, there it is down there. Is that yellow oxide? Yellow ochre, yellow oxide. Yep. Now we've got yellow ochre down there. Now I've got my sap green. Let's get this a bit wet so it's going to. And I want to mix some of this. I want to get a, a greeny, gold, yellowy color going there. Just different flavor of what's already in the painting. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Get some more water in it, not too much. You don't want it to go transparent and turn to a dog's breakfast. All right. I'll start from the left and come to the right, I suppose. Now it's pretty much, I want air in between. So I want to get air in between. Now there, there'll be clumps down here as well, which I can join up with little black sticks if I need to. So see like this here, this is sort of on its own. Leave the black sticks there, don't cover them right up, but you've got foliage here and hopefully it's a different green than what we got everywhere else. And now we're gonna start, come and cross your trunks Work out where your clouds are you want to keep and you're going backwards and forwards. Oh, big bit of yellow there. Uh, you're, you're tracing backwards and forwards. Goodness me. Over your trunks. There we go. Now what I might do is I'll do a bit of a Len hand trick here. I've got the yellow oxide not quite mixed on the top. Now down here we've got some leaves here because the sun's hitting it it's giving it that golden yellowy green color if you know what I mean down there in front of your trunks there oh big blobs on there I'll get rid of them so we don't have any accidents falling down coming down here and we've got some stuff just floating around here Can I have a look at that? Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, need some darker bits now. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got that value there. I'll give the brush a wipe because it's a bit floaty, if you know what I mean. It's looking a bit floaty and light. So I need to just get some darker value in there to make it look like it's got pizzazz. So what I'm gonna do, that perylene green that I had, because that's a beautiful, that's great for your darks. I'm going to use that just to darken it up a bit before I highlight everything, okay? So I'll get that on my brush. I'm just going to, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my reference and sort of get an indication where the darks are. So there's, there's glumps of dark green here. Well, too much. I'll put a little bit of yellow in it. I'm just putting a little bit of yellow in that to turn the lights on because it looks black and it's going to clash with the trunk. There we go. So I'm just getting some clumps of darkness within these foliage here. A uh, little bit's all here. And when we highlight it, it's going to look quite reasonable. People will come to your house for a coffee, you got your painting proudly plas plastered on your wall there, they're going to walk in, they're going to break their neck, turn around to look at it and they're going to go, I like that. They're just going to love it. And that's what you want, you want people to like your artwork. I'm just looking for dark bits where I feel I might need them, a bit in here floating around. How's that looking in the camera? It's looking probably a bit more believable, would you say? I'm not the best at realism, but just something that can give you beginners an idea of, hey, I want to do that, and I reckon I can. I'm not really here to show you, like, wow, look what I can paint, look how good I am at painting. I'm here to show a beginner how 
things can be done from your mind onto a canvas and that, to let you know that you can do it. You really can. So we've got lots of dark in there. Big dark shadows there coming. There we go. And that's it. I mean, probably a bit of darkness right up here. Now I'll wash this brush. How's it looking okay? <laughs> Pull into that, so we're getting a real backlit yellowy green sort of scene there. Where are we? There we go, like that. Um, before I move the camera, I just want to look. Yes, that's probably not as yellow as it needs to be, but that'll do. And try. Oh, geez, it needs to be more yellow, I reckon. It's the yellow green made it real mustardy. There we go. I'm mainly doing the the airy tip bits, tips. See where it's airy here, like that. This is just a filbert brush, something simple. And it radiates up here. Boom, boom, boom. Got me coffee there underneath the easel. I just saw it and I'm like, oh. Just the tidbits here. Some of it up there, not too much. Lacing around here from the dark into the light. Now, you can do this, eh? What do you reckon? And I'm going to grab, I'll grab the real yellowy yellow because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to autograph this and whack a frame on it and see how she looks. So I'll get this paint inky enough. Okay, so autograph it here. Now, I want to thank all my patrons that support my content every month. Much appreciated. You really help my channel out greatly. And everyone else that supports my content is always appreciated. Check out the links in the description below. Become a member of my art group. Tell me you saw me on YouTube to answer the questions. And become a patron of mine and see what everyone else sees before everyone else. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. Yeah, there you go. That's not too shabby. We've got a beautiful, simple meadow, sunsetting meadow scene there, okay? We've got the sun setting there. We've got some beautiful clouds and the hopefully the tree looks like that. And we've got some distant ones here. Probably could put a bit of a shadow there if we want. I might do that later on. And you know what? I know you can do it. All right, pretty simple, pretty effective. I had fun doing that, and I hope you had fun watching. Share, like, and subscribe. Check out the links in the description below. Colours that I use will be down there as well. And be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.